let's get going. Uh, welcome everybody to our, bi our semi-monthly Feeling Fit with FSHD. We meet on the second and fourth Thursdays of every month at noon Eastern time. And this month we have the amazing Frank Hanley again, uh, Qigong <laughs> master uh, who has applied, you know, with great success and meaning his practice to managing his FSHD symptoms. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Frank. Tell us what you're going to talk about today and show us. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. As always, thank you. Um, and thanks for letting me do this because I really uh, enjoy it and I like sharing uh, what I do with, uh, with others. So we've got a, a pretty good group today also, which is nice. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm Frank Hanley. Um, for those uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this uh, this meeting, um, I like to use the chat box, which is on the under your screen. There's a little talk bubble that says chat. So if you bring that up, and so if you have any questions, you can um, type them there, or you can unmute and talk. Hello, Nancy. Nancy said hello. Um, so anyway, um, and also if, uh, if you're new, this is what I like to do to get a, to kind of take a, a poll. If you're new to, uh, to these, this meeting, um, you might want to type new in the chat box. And if you're a re returning veteran, uh, I see a few folks out there like Renee. Hey, Renee. Um, uh, just put returning. Uh, in the chat box, if you can, uh, just give me a gauge of of who's who and and where you are. So we've uh, this is our sixth, I believe sixth or seventh a meeting. We started in September last year. Um, I do qigong and kung fu. I practiced martial arts for about thirty years, um, and as I I fell into finding out what FSH uh, is and um, the effects of it that it's had on me. I've continued to practice martial arts, um, and I was fortunate enough to have a couple of teachers who were able to uh, modify some of the routines to help me to keep going. And uh, and that's what I do to fight back against the FSH. We all need something to fight back, and that's what I use. Um, and I, um, if you haven't seen any of the like people who are new here, um, June, maybe during the course of this, you can put up the, um, the link to the um, YouTube uh, channel, the FSH YouTube channel, and the videos that we've uh, done, uh, the sessions we've done in the, in the past are, are all up there uh, are recorded, so you can go back and watch them at your leisure. So um, this one will be up there too. So um, real quick, um, I practice Qigong and Kung Fu and Tai Chi martial arts. Uh, my my quick FSH history, I noticed um, winging of my left shoulder when I was about 17 years old. Um, it uh, When I was in my late 20s, early 30s, I started to get a foot drop and um, I had the winging in both shoulders. Um, and now um, it's in my core. So I have very weak hips. I always like to joke that I, uh, sh I struggle with a bag of groceries and the groceries usually win. Um, so I, uh, people who, who uh, have the core weakness uh, can, can understand that also. So um, today I'm talking about um, some exercises that I like to do for hands, uh, your hand in case anyone's not familiar, uh, the wrist, and uh, lastly, your forearm. Um, I'm going to bring my camera down just a scooch so you can see better. So we're going to work on the hand, the wrist, and the forearm today. And um, format is basically I, I'll do a couple exercises. We'll stop and see if there's any, any questions, and then we'll do a few more, and we'll go that way. Um, towards the end, we'll kind of have an open mic. If you have something that you'd like to share, um, you're welcome to do that. And um, just a couple of housekeeping things before I start. Um, I mentioned there's a blog um, on the FSH Society website um, that has some information about these sessions. And um, it's got uh, links to the, um, I'm sorry, it's got links to the, the YouTubes. Um, disclaimer, um, use your best discretion. I am not a professional, I'm just, a person who has FSH and has 
uh, some experience in physical training and I'm just sharing with you guys. So um, if you want to follow along and not do anything and ask uh, advice from uh, uh, your health professional, you're, you're welcome to do that also. Um, and also the other thing is I usually publish a, um, I usually publish a handout when we're done. So if you want a copy of the handout, I'll email that to you. All you need to do is type your um, email in the chat. Um, if you're returning, I probably already have it, so uh, you don't need to bother. Um, and uh, before I get going, does anyone have any questions? No? All right. So um, let me start by introducing a few friends of mine um, for the exercises here as we go along. Um, you might want to, and you don't need to do it today, find yourself a small dumbbell to use. This one is a, a one pound dumbbell. And then I've got a, a, a bigger one, which is a three pound dumbbell. And we'll, I'll do some examples using those um, to exercise later. A rubber ball, good for squeezing. Okay, this one I borrowed from my dog because I couldn't find a, <laughs> a smaller one. And lastly, a, a wooden dowel, if you have one. Um, chop off a broomstick. I got this uh, was a a closet pole um, that I cut down to when I, I bought it, it was longer. So I just keep this around to, to do some of these exercises also. And we'll work those in as we go. Um, I just have to change the view so I can see myself um, better. Or maybe June, can you switch this so I'm the, uh, maybe I have to pin Sorry, this. are you trying there to? There we go. I got it. I got it. I had to pin myself because I just wanted to see what everybody else is seeing. Okay. Rather than a, a tiny little thumbnail, Frank. Okay. So um, again, we did went over the equipment. So let's start um, with handshakes. So um, I'm going to be using different terms for different handshakes. So um, open hand is just basically uh, that your hand is open. Um, open hand might be closed or your fingers are spread. Um, there's a snake, what I call a snake position, where your, your fingers are all together and your thumb is tucked in, snake position, so it kind of looks like the head of a snake. Um, a fist, uh, everybody should know how to make a fist. If you don't, middle finger into the middle, middle part of your hand, pull your knuckles in, and then your thumb goes over the front. So you have a flat surface on the front. That's the punching surface. Not that we're going to be punching things, but we are going to be making fists. And the last one is a claw, which is where we're going to bend at the second knuckle and make a claw, like a tiger claw or a cat claw type of a shape. So uh, again, open hand, uh, spread your fingers, the snake, a fist, and the claw. All right, so we're going to be using those different hand shapes as we go through these exercises. Um, warm up, if everybody's ready. Um, a simple warm up is to um, imagine you're just holding a doorknob and turn the knob, turn it back. So we'll do 10 of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. If you can, um, next exercise, take your, I'm going to use my right hand here. Uh, Face your palm outside so you kind of your wrist is turned in and hold your thumb on the outside. And we're going to push that arm out and twist the forearm and pull it back to your chest. So let me pull it back a little bit. So push out. And you should feel a little stretch in your forearm. Out and back. Out, back. Switch, left hand, switch, 
Switch back. One, two, three. Other side. One, two, three. Now keeping that position in, roll your, turn your wrist to the inside. So your hand turns in towards your chest. Now the full exercise is out, back, twist down. Out, back, twist down. Out, back, twist down. Switch hands, out, back, twist down. Out, back, twist down. Out, back, twist down. Out, and hold it. Twist down. One more, out, back and twist down. And last, your wrist is in here and drop your wrist into your, into your lap. So you kind of get a stretch under here. Just drop your wrist down. I'm gonna fix my camera, I'm sorry. I don't have a very wide camera here. Drop, relax, drop. Relax, drop, and relax. Switch hands, drop, and relax, drop, relax. That's Alex in the background there. Drop, and relax. Okay, shake them out. Right, any questions with that forearm twist, warm up exercise? No? Okay, great. So next, next warm up is a wrist circle. So we're gonna hold your just your your. I'm, I got my left hand holding my right arm, forearm just below my wrist, and we're going to circle down circle down and come back up. So my palm is facing me when I start, my palm is facing out when I'm done, and turn it, and go down and up again, down and up, down and up, down and up. Okay, make a fist, circle down and up, down and up, down and up. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Open hand, or make a fist. Okay, now, open hand, turn to the, if you want to keep it flat, drop your hand down and then raise it back up. So your wrist is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, switch hands. So let's do that, open palm circle, open palm circle. Open palm circle, 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 make a fist, circle. You don't need to have a very tight fist, just exhibiting the different positions you can have. And this flat, up and down, simple wave, or maybe we'll call it the wave, right? Okay, clap, palms, clap. Left hand on top, right hand on top. Take a little blood flowing in your hands. Good, check them out. Your wrists should be nice and loose by now. Okay, last one. Touch your fingers to your thumb. Pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, index finger, 
middle finger, ring finger, pinky. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Switch hands. Pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. 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 Very good. Anybody have any questions? Questions? No? Excuse me a moment. I need to take a little drink. Okay, ready, some hands ready to go. <laughs> All right, first we'll do some hand exercises and then we'll do some wrist exercises and then we will do some forearm exercises. And then next week when we get back together again, we'll just go through these all and we'll just mix them all up to make it a little more interesting instead of just doing uh, them all together. Um, so let's start with the hands. So we're gonna just do a fist, a tight fist. I want you to make a fist as tight as you can. Hold that for, for count of five. And then open your hand as wide as you can. Spread your fingers as wide as you can for a count of five. So anybody who's been this before, we're gonna, in, we're gonna inhale when we open. And we're going to exhale when we make that fist. So when we're open, we inhale, do our belly breathing. Exhale, tight. Two, three, four, five. You can do both hands together. So inhale, three, four, five. Tight, pump fists. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale. Snap your hands open. Inhale. Snap them closed. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. I always have to scroll my uh, my chat forward here. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, why am I having? Okay. There we go. Okay. So next is um, uh, open and close. So we have our hands, uh, we start open. So we're gonna just open and close to a loose fist. Okay, open is open wide, loose fist. Open wide, loose fist. We're gonna do this quickly. We're gonna do 10, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Up, turn your hands over. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 to the sides. There's no reason for doing this other than breaking up the boredom. <laughs> Palms up. Back to front. Speed it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Shake them out. <laughs> Junior laughing. Are you having fun? <laughs> My hands are getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a break on the hands in a minute. Okay, so the next one is kind of, um, I'm, I'm going to do it on this pad. What I want you to try to do is do it on uh, a tabletop. It's just simple. Um, take your hand, you're, you're kind of like if you were doing the, the itsy spider, if you can see. Your fingertips are all on the tabletop, and you just tap. 
it's build up a little sensitivity. This is what this will do. It'll build up a little. You're not banging. You're just tapping lightly. Um, and you can tap 10 times each hand, and you can alternate. It just builds up some sensitivity in your fingertips. Um, if you're going to ask the question, how many of these to do, I would do a, like five minutes of these, work towards, maybe do 100 each hand. It's just, ge just gentle. Well, that's why we were doing the, the clapping before too. You could also do this open palm, but I, I suggest you do it um, on a tabletop or a board because I'm doing them on this pad just for example, and it's not it's not hard enough to to give me the feeling I want. But um, okay, so that's finger tapping. You can alternate hands, do one, do the other. Speed it up, slow it down. It's just a gentle tapping. You're not slamming your fingertips into the into the tabletop. Just a gentle tapping. Um, like I said, it, it it helps build up sensitivity uh, in your fingertips. Get some get some activity back on the on the ends there. Okay. Uh, so Anne asks, does that help the diaphragm muscle when you breathe in and out? Does the breathing help? Is that what you're asking? Um, do you want to unmute and ask your question there, Ann? You're welcome to do that. All right. All right. Um, I, yeah, I just, I'm behind, but back when you had us breathing. Yes. Does that help? To, is that an exercise that would help the diaphragm muscle? Absolutely, yes. Um, if you go back to, um, if you can go into the YouTubes, um, go back to the September sessions. I do a whole, actually, in, in most of them I do, I do a, a whole section on diaphragm breathing. Um, okay. Definitely helps. Um, real quick, real quick story with diaphragm breathing. If everybody will bear with me, if you've heard it, you can maybe just tune me out for a second. So back, um, I was going to Johns Hopkins uh, in Baltimore for um, to the MDA clinic there. And, and when I went to meet with the urologist one time, he asked me about um, if I was getting headaches, if I was waking with headaches. And I said, yeah, I, I actually am. Um, and his thinking was that the FSH was affecting my diaphragm. So he wanted me to go for a breathing test. Um, and he shouldn't have told me that because I went back to my, my Kung Fu teacher and he gave me a whole bunch of, um, well, actually he didn't give me a whole bunch. We just doubled up on the, um, the, the um, diaphragm breathing that we were, do we were doing in our practice. And he gave me a couple of other diaphragm breathing exercises to do, which I share some of those in those, uh, those September, October, um, September, November and December, I think, are the months uh, that that uh, we do diaphragm breathing. So if you want to go back and check those out, please do. Um, definitely helps because it um, it not only uh, helps your diaphragm, it exercises all of your abdominals, and you'll see in those exercises. But yes, they do help your diaphragm. Okay, so great question. Thank you. Sorry for the sidebar there, folks. Okay. Um, where are we in our, um, oh, thumb, okay. So uh, let, me, let me do that and back up a little bit. So um, your thumb, hold your hand like mine and take your thumb and cross it across your palm. Do both at the same time. You're welcome to do that. I'll save a little time here. It's already 12:30. I talk too much. <laughs> all right. So that definitely works. All this in here. All of this. Uh, where's my camera? There. All this in here. You're working all that. And you hold it there for a while. You kind of feel that crimping in there. All right, and then the other one is to make a circle with your thumb. Clockwise, counterclockwise. 
never knew your exercises for your thumb, right? Actually, the thumb is the, the tip of the thumb is the, the end of the lung meridian. So um, doing exercises with your, your thumb is very good for your lung energy. Um, what I like to do is push that thumb out uh, from my hand as far as I can. The, thumb, the point right at the tip of your thumb is your the end of the lung meridian. So exercising your thumb is good for your lungs. That's uh, interesting. Uh, anybody that does it, any knowledge of acupuncture or qigong and the acupuncture points. Okay. Good. That's it for hands. Everybody's hands should be, feel really light right now. Okay. Everybody good? Any questions on what we just went through? Uh, those of you who have your thing, give me a thumbs up and we'll move on. Excellent. Okay. Well, somebody found a thumbs up in the... <laughs> awesome. All right. Let me just scoot through here, see where we are. Okay. Well, if you want to put in the chat um, where, where you're where you actually are would be interesting for me to know also. Um, I'm actually in Southeast North Carolina. So the only, the only direction I'm missing out of that is West, Southeast North Carolina. Um, Western Southeast North Carolina, there we go. <laughs> actually, I mean, Eastern Southeast North Carolina. But anyway, um, yeah, where's everybody at? Um, if you're in Europe, welcome. I know sometimes we get some of our Europe friends dropping in here. Yeah, I'm near Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, halfway between Myrtle Beach, South Carolina and Wilmington, North Carolina. So anyway, uh, also, ooh, LA, cool. Alabama, Florida Panhandle. My son is in Orlando. I'm going to see him tomorrow. Good to know. California, two California folks in, cool. All right, great. And June is visiting New York City today. Lucky June. <laughs> okay. Um, everybody good with the hands? All right. So let's move on to the feet. No, we'll do the feet some other time. I was going to tease everybody and tell them we were working on back handsprings today because I was teasing my daughter used to go to gymnastics class and she used to do back handsprings. That was a big thing. I used to watch her and I was like, boy, I wish I could do that. <laughs> All right, wrists, the wrist, okay? A lot of interesting things happening in the wrist. Uh, I was talking about the thumb meridian. Well, there's six meridians that run through the wrist, three on the top and three on the bottom. And again, some of those Qigong exercises that I do in some of the other uh, classes, um, excuse me, exercise those meridians. So if you wanna, again, go back into the recordings, um, it's good stuff. Uh, we will do uh, a few, what I got about eight of them here. Okay, so um, loose fist, and you could do these with both hands at the same time if you want. And we were doing that wrist curl earlier. All right, again, just to repeat that. If you wanna hold your wrist um, while doing that, that's great. All right. It's my right hand. I'll do a few with my left hand. All right. Try to keep you isolate the movement in your wrist. All right. We'll just do a couple together, both hands. And then we can again do those with our hands open also. We don't need to make the fists. I like to use fists sometimes, sometimes not circles. Okay. And then you can go backwards too if you feel like it. Again, the variety, spice it up a little. Okay. Next one, if you grab your wrists and we'll have that whole, just bring this down. Um, we're going to take our wrists. I'm trying to get the camera angles right here. I'm sorry. I'm just experimenting with this. There we go. And curl your wrist in and down. Curl in 
So you want your wrist to hang down. Oh, there we go. Up and down. Up, up and down. So this is in your wrist for now. Loose, loose, loose fist. Okay. We'll do one with a tight fist later, uh, and that hits a little more into your um, forearm muscles. Switch hands. I'm marking my left hand here. Two more. Okay. And the next one is open hand, and we're going to just let our hand drop. And then we're going to lift it up. So you want some tension up here in the forearm and tension here in the top of the wrist. Drop. Okay. We're going to hold our, our wrist again. Um, it's a, a vertical fist instead of a hard here. It's horizontal fist, vertical fist. Right? So the vertical fist, drop your wrist down and up. Front. Chance. Good. All right. Next one. Um, we'll go back to that snake hand shape that I mentioned. So you want your your hand to look like a um, snake head. And we're going to go side to side. Switch hands. Turn up and down. What we're moving is the wrist. Switch hands. Good. All right. Any questions with that so far? All right. So back to our curls. Now I want you to make a tighter fist and pull that in and you should feel that a stretch in your, your forearm muscle also. So pull that tight, tight fist, pull the arm up tight and down. Relax, up, relax, up, relax, up, and relax. Switch hands, tight fist, up, relax, up, Relax, up, relax, up, relax, up, and relax. Okay, shake them out. Questions, anyone? I right, got a couple more. So now, um, let me just demonstrate. Um, I was mentioned about using a dumbbell. So the exercises that I like to use um, with the dumbbell are um, the circles. 
right? So now we're doing with that little, little weight. Reverse. Okay. If you just want to follow along with an empty hand, you're fine. Okay, and then when we did that up and down, right, up and down. And side to side. And then the curl. And actually with the weight, it benefits says as, as your hand comes down, now you're able to get a little more, more activity here because you're actually trying to pick that weight up when you let your hand drop back all the way. So we're able to go up and down. Okay. So that was using the um, using the dumbbell to do those uh, also. So as you get a little more strength in your hands, uh, you're able to do that with the with the weight. So again, I had a I have a small one here. You can you can probably just get these on Amazon, really easy. Uh, a small one pound one, and the, the darker one that I was just using is a three pound. So um, welcome to try those with some with some weight. All right, uh, so that's it for, let me go back. That's it for uh, the wrists. Um, uh, any questions? Oh, Frank, maybe towards the end, I didn't want to break up the flow of the exercise. I would be interested in knowing what kinds of hand, wrist, forearm, issues people may be having. Well, that, that, that would be a good discussion, right? So let me just finish up the forearm. I got like five minutes of that and then we'll we'll open the floor, June, okay? okay. Nope, yep, you yeah, know, that would be definitely, and, and I would like to hear where people are struggling with some of these two because I would, um, I'm not having issues and I'm, I, I don't want to assume people are not having issues. So that would be a good conversation to have. Um, Anyway, let me jump to uh, last one is the forearms. So again, I'm just going to review this because I did them earlier, the twist um, that we were doing. So you, um, anybody might have come in a little late. Um, thumb in the back of your your hand and twist your forearm out and then come back and twist it under. So you go out to stretch it and back in to stretch it. So you get a really good forearm stretch doing this. So out, back, and then if you bring it back up and then drop it, we'll do it all three of those that we were doing before. So stretch it out, come back in, turn the wrist under, turn it back out and then drop it down into your waist. So you get three way stretch there. One out straight, Two is turn it under, and the third is to drop it down. And we'll switch hands, out, under, out, under, down. And you could do these onesies. You can just do these onesies. Down, down, under, under. So that stretches the, from the wrist back to um, the forearm area. Uh, we were doing these uh, wrist curls earlier, and I might have done them, um, but we do the curl, tight fist. I, I'm really struggling with this camera here. Right, let me do it this way. There we go. Tight fist. Curl tight and hold. Now you should feel that all in here, all the way from your wrist, these muscles here, all the way down into your elbow. And then relax, open palm. Nice tight fist, curl it. 
Count to five, and then relax. Nice tight fist. Curl it. And then relax. Okay, so those are really, really good stretches for the forearms. Um, the reverse of that is to turn your hand over. And um, you might remember if you've done these before, we did that, uh, the four finger support, the heavens hand shape. So you hold your wrist out and create tension up above. And that creates tension in these forearm muscles on top here. So hold that hand out and pull your wrist, your, your fingers back um, using these muscles. Um, and that gets you a nice stretch on the top. If you count to five, three, four, five, relax. Bring it up, one, two, three, four, five, and relax. Bring it up, one, two, three, four, five, and relax. So the other thing is um, to, to get this sensation is you might want to um, feel like you're pushing against the wall. Um, that's kind of the sensation you want. You want the tension again in the top of your wrist and that drives these forearm muscles nice and tight. So two more, one, two, three, four, five, and relax. And last one, one, two, three, four, five, and relax. Okay, shake them out. Got one more and then we'll, we'll be done. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna use my little wooden dowel. And you may have seen this uh, in other exercises. So really all we're gonna do is we're going to roll this. I'm rolling it forward. So my knuckles are going forward with this. So I'm gonna roll it forward with my left hand, roll it forward with my right. And I alternate um, doing that. You might have seen this where they have a weight hanging and you roll the weight up and then you do the opposite where you un unwind it. So now my knuckles are going from bottom to top. So again, we use the, I'm using an empty little wood dowel. So forward is one, one sensation, one feeling, and then backwards is a different sensation or different feeling. And if you get so inclined and want to get fancy with this, you could um, attach a string. Usually you put a hole in here so the string will wind up as you're doing this with a weight hanging. Uh, and you wind the weight up and then you wind the weight back down again. So you go up and back and forth. So you're rolling in the different directions. And that works, these forearm muscles. Um, and if you want to um, reverse your hands, and you can do the same thing with your palms facing up. So that's um, just examples of that using this small piece of piece of wood to practice rolling with your wrists. Okay. Any questions, my friends? All right. So I'm just going to read the comments real quick. Of, uh, difficulty. All right. All right. So we'll, um, folks are having issues holding things. So why don't we have some conversation about that? Um, a few people make comments. If you want to unmute and um, let's, let's uh, leave it open the floor up and folks can have some conversation here. I will stop talking. <laughs> well, I have Anne posted that she has pain in the palm of her left hand only below my Thumb on my left hand. She says she's right-handed. I either heard it unloading and carrying groceries in plastic bags or from holding the phone. Oh yeah, the phone is a <laughs> hazard for everybody. <laughs> I get cramps and bad position, but I'm curious. Speak oh, there's a hand raise from I don't have the name, Zoom user. 
It's, it's Jeff Garner. So um, my question is, so I don't have a lot of the hand weakness yet. Maybe not my legs. I get some pain, but I don't know what that's attributed to yet. Most of mine is in my upper back and, and shoulders. But <clears throat> doing these, I'm imagining it's more of a comment than a question, but I'm imagining that these, um, these exercises with the hands and forearms, that's going to help me even now when I don't have it right. And I should be doing this, you know, to preemptively, you know, help me to just keep that muscle um, mass and ability to use my, my hands and arms. Um, yes, exactly. That's, that's exactly, um, well, that's what I would do. Um, I, I, I think um, to, to, to expand on your comment, a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of, a lot of people in in this in this society, and a lot of a lot of comments that I've seen over the course of different discussion groups, there is such a, a huge, diverse answer set as far as exercise. Um, I remember going to um, a neurologist who who said, you know, exercise, don't don't do any exercise, or just do real low um, light weights and walk. Don't do um, any extra, which, which I, I don't, I don't personally don't think is is the right thing because if FSH is affecting twenty percent, the other eighty percent is now atrophying because you're not doing anything. So um, to, to your question, yes, the, the, I think, and again, this is just my opinion, the activity is good because you're you are strengthening and toning the muscles while they're good. Um, if you could build up more mass. If F FSH does uh, in impact that area, it's going to have a lot more muscle that it's going to have to deteriorate. So you're going, you're basically, I think, and again, you know, I'm just talking from myself. Um, I think you'll have a longer period where you'll still have, you know, use of those muscles before. Because if you weren't doing anything and the FSH hit that area, it might have a, a, a severe impact right off the bat. So. Um, I, I, you understand what I'm saying? And again, this is just my, my two cents. Uh, you know, that's why, that's why I exercise because like I said, FSH affects 20%. The other, the other 80 still should be, you know, sh should be exercising because FSH does move into that area. Now there's more muscle that it has to, to deal with. Um, so does that answer your question, Jeff? I, I hope. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's more of a comment. I just more like a reaffirming myself that I need to do this stuff. Um, so, you know, I appreciate that a lot. Um, and I, it's, it's been, you know, it's been a, a struggle for myself being a very, you know, pretty athletic person and, and doing a lot of things and just having that, not having the, just being kind of, um, you know, not doing those, you know, stop doing those things because I feel like either I'm not told not to do them or just like I'm not going to find the joy in that later. So, you know, why, why continue to do it? But, you know, it's, it's important on several levels to do these right. activities. So I, I appreciate the, that being reaffirmed. Oh, good. Oh, good. But I could offer some 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 positive reinforcement there, I guess. Is yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm curious with this group because um, if you read the medical literature and FSHD, or you ask the expert doctors, they they never mention hands, wrists, or forearms. They always talk about biceps and shoulders, but if I'm in a meeting with a group of people in the society, I see a fair number of people with um, hand weakness of various sorts. Um, and I think it's something that's overlooked. So I'm just wondering in this group, if people, other people, you know, how many if you raise your hand experience weakness in those? Yeah, Ruth. Yes almost completely now. I mean, I can still type, but I, I can't open my hands, you know, and most of the exercises 
that Frank were do- was doing, I couldn't do it because of my weak wrists and hands, you know. Forearms. My forearms are weak also. Yeah. 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 So eating is a, getting to be more of a struggle, raising my arms up to, um, you know, and hands to hold things and arms to feed myself. So, yeah. And I, and I think that's really common with the, you know, other people I've seen with FSH, certainly at the center, um, having seen quite a few, but it really, FSH is so variable because I tend to see people who have more facial weakness, but then they walk, uh, they're still walking for much longer than other people who, like myself, who may have a little less facial weakness, but I have, um, you know, I got lordosis early and I had um, more, I think, early um, scapular winging and, and uh, now the arms and hands and stuff. So it's all over the map, I think. But definitely there's a, a segment of the population that have that. When you go to your physical therapist, Ruth, do they analyze, like, are there specific muscles in your hands or wrists that were affected early and then just threw off the all functioning your hand and muscle? Or is there anything that they recommended in the way of exercise or stretches? Or Well, I think because by the time I got to our physios here at the center, um, I was already in the chair. So the focus has uh, generally been about um, stretching me and keeping me functional and not too stiff um, within the chair and some uh, just functional mobility. So we haven't necessarily focused on the hands as much, but I do think that that is something. And it was interesting when Frank was, I was trying to follow Frank and doing some of those exercises. I actually noticed that um, it was, I could feel it in my neck and shoulders, which are areas that uh, the physios do work on. And I never really thought about the hand and wrist, um, just those movements being able to affect your uh, the tension. I mean, it's logical, but I never thought about it. Um, you know, that it's all kind of interconnected. So anyway. That's interesting that, um, well, maybe next time you talk to your physio, ask about the hands and ask, see what they. Yeah. They might've done it with other, um, with other FSH uh, patients. It's just for me in particular, I've always focused on the lordosis and the um, hip. And, and leg issues that I've had mostly, you know, and the back. But I did, I did want to follow up uh, just to, to also um, kind of support what Frank was saying about more uh, movement and Jeff, was it? Um, you know, I always thought, well, why exercise? Because it might damage my muscles more and this and that. But actually having um, work you know, worked at the center and seen um, functional improvements um, from people who started to to exercise and do more physio uh, because our physios will focus on reactivating muscles that have um, weakened through disuse. So while technically you're not getting stronger, what they are doing is bringing more muscles back into play and um, I've actually seen some people who, who uh, were starting to use a walker who were able to kind of stand upright again and, and things like that because they were doing some, some more uh, physical exercise and targeting, targeted exercise. That's such an important message. Can't. Yeah. Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I had known a lot sooner <laughs> about that. But. Um, I would like to add that it's just, it's a very delicate balance um, to know how much you work out because I have worked with physical therapists who made my muscles so fatigued that actually I 
lose function. Um, so, and, and I cannot blame them because they don't know and they're not trained, but you know, sometimes you think as the patient, you think, well, I'm doing this. And then later on you realize that actually you hurt yourself. Yeah. Well, that's the other aspect that we find. We actually have a lot of patients who come and say they, they have gone to physios who have tried to get them to do uh, things that they're not able to do or things that are actually unsafe for them to do. Um, we actually had a physio or um, an osteo whose son has MD in the hospital and they were having hospital physios who were telling them, oh, he can just do this. And he said he can't do this and not in the way you want it. It's not a matter of training. It's a matter of the, the muscle weakness. So uh, there, there is that. I'm not saying all physios are great and, and would understand this. So you have to know your own body and you have to know your limits. Um, Ulrika would say, I don't know if you, how many of you attended and what questions you asked her, but one of kind of the general rules that our physios say is if you're fatigued for, say, an hour or two, then it's an okay level of exercise. Yes. If you're fatigued for more than 24 hours, then you, um, you're overdoing it. So I don't know if that helps anyone, but I think you do need to be careful not to overfatigue your muscles as well. When I first started going to the, this is Donna. <laughs> when I um, first started going to get physical therapy, it was three days a week. And I noticed that I was just so tired the next day that I called them up and I said, I can't, I can't do this three times a week. It's too much. I can feel it in my body. So then they were, oh, okay, you can do it two times. It's, it's, it's fine. We don't want to, we don't want to over exhaust you. But um, a lot of times they don't know how you feel the next day or after. So you have to tell them, like, this is just, I can't do it. I can't do it three times a week. It's too much. The next day, I, I, I don't want to walk, you know, um, because I'm too tired. And I noticed that my, um, my arms, I have, to, I have to buy the small, smaller bottles of milk because I can't lift a quart. It, it's, mm -hmm. I can lift it, but it's hard. And I don't want to spill anything. So um, I have to get the smaller bottles of milk from Instacart. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, little things like that. I but I make my myself up. pick those up, you know. Yeah. Use plastic cups with, with um, lids and stuff because otherwise I'll be spilling. Or I just can't pick things up with safely anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, smaller yeah. bottles work better. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, and I make myself pick up those, you know, so that you still have that range of motion. Yeah. Any other questions or comments or sh anything you want to share? Now's a Now's the time. <laughs> Otherwise, we can uh, adjourn and um, we'll meet again in two weeks. Yes, yes. Yeah, next meeting will be the 23rd, I believe. Yeah, uh, same time. So then if you want to practice, Tuesday, I've got a few more. Actually, I, I was just sitting here um, thinking I, I, I have a few more that I held in my back pocket. So I will not. Uh, Come back and we'll give you a couple more to uh, uh, so you can work on. June, thanks very much, everybody. Thanks very much for coming. I really appreciate um, taking the time out. To, it makes it it makes me feel good that folks are are uh, taking the time to join in on these uh, these um, sessions. So thank you all for for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you, Frank and June. It was excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. It's great. Okay, thank you. Bye. -bye.
Have a good week.